In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the period of a pendulum moving in a circle. The question reads, a conical pendulum is a mass on an end of a cord where the mass moves at constant speed in a circle with the cord tracing out a cone. A conical pendulum of length 1.2 meters moves in a circle of radius 0.20 meters. What is the period of the pendulum? Let's begin with an illustration of what's happening. Let's draw out a cone where this is a cord and the cord is attached to a mass. This mass is moving in a circular motion. So there's centripetal force occurring. Not only is there centripetal force occurring towards the center of the circle, but there's also force due to gravity, and that's directed downwards. The force due to gravity can be found using the formula F is equal to MA, where that is Newton's second law. And rather than using A, we use G because G represents the acceleration due to gravity. So I'll write down mass times gravity. Now we have a long way to go from here because in order for this thing to continue moving in a circle, the upwards force, which is the vertical component of this vector, which we represent as T for tension, that must be equal to the downwards force due to gravity. And ignore the fact that this one is longer than that, just for illustration purposes. So we have to create an equation that equates m times g with an expression that represents this vertical component. Now how do we do that? Well let's assume that we have an angle theta and to relate t and what we're looking for right here we can use the trigonometric function cosine to give us this magnitude. So let's continue drawing this as if it was a right triangle. Cosine represents the adjacent length over the hypotenuse. So I'll write down cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I want to find out adjacent, I multiply both sides by what is represented as the hypotenuse, and I'll just replace that with T for the magnitude of the tension. So multiplying both sides by T, I get T cosine theta is equal to the magnitude of this vertical component. I now have an expression that represents the magnitude of this vertical component. And as I mentioned earlier, this has to be in equilibrium with the downwards force due to gravity. So I'll multiply this by mass times gravity. All right, we're making progress here. The next thing that I want to do is take into account the centripetal force. The centripetal force is represented by this vector going directly to the center of the circle. And this vector, whether it be drawn here or up here, is the same thing. So we need to find out the magnitude of the vector that is the horizontal component of t. And that can be represented using sine. Remember, sine is a representation of opposite to the hypotenuse. And I'll explain why this is important in a moment. So again, I'm going to replace the hypotenuse with t. And remember, sine is opposite. So that's what we're looking for, opposite. We have the hypotenuse being t. Multiplying both sides by t, we get sine theta is equal to the opposite. So that expression represents the magnitude of the horizontal component. The reason why we need this is because if we're trying to find the centripetal force, which is represented by this vector. Again, we would use F is equal to MA. I would replace force with this expression. So I have T times sine theta is equal to mass times, and the acceleration actually gets its own expression. The acceleration in centripetal force, which I'll represent as A sub C, is equal to V to the power of two, representing the velocity, over R. So I'll replace this a with v to the power of 2 over r. All right, we have two equations and several different unknowns. Let me just highlight them for you. I have this one and this one. And what I will do is solve for the velocity. And from that, you can find out everything else. Now, in order to solve for velocity, this part, let's use substitution as a method to solve. 
And what I mean by that is I'll solve for t in this equation. If I do that, I get t is equal to m times v to the power of 2 over r. And at the bottom will be sine theta, because I divided both sides by sine theta. All right, now I'll take that and throw it into there, where I have m times v to the power of 2. Apologies for the weird way that I'm writing these letters. Over r times sine theta times cosine theta is equal to mg. Interestingly, we have an m on this side and m on this side. So if we divide both sides by m, that goes away. We don't even have to worry about the mass of this object. It's not even important here. Furthermore, I said that we are solving for v. So it would be a good time now to multiply both sides by r sine theta. Now it really helps to be good at algebra when you are doing physics because of situations like these. We have on the left side v to the power of 2 times cosine theta. That's equal to g times r sine theta. Dividing both sides by cosine theta. That cancels out. And we are left with v squared, which you can get rid of the squared by square rooting both sides. So let's assume that we do that. We get g times r times sine theta over cosine theta. Now remember, sine over cosine, that's an identity for tangent. So feel free to use tangent if you like. The next step is to replace these with what they are equal to. So g is represented as the acceleration due to gravity being 9.8. The radius is given in the question as 0 0.2. Sine theta, remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse is 0 0.2 over 1.2. Let me write that in. 0 0.2 over 1.2 and cosine that's adjacent over hypotenuse. We don't have adjacent, so we'll need to use Pythagorean's theorem. It's adjacent over the hypotenuse. So let's find out what that is. We have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Our hypotenuse is 1.2 raised to the power of 2. Let's call that b, so minus 0 0.2 raised to the power of 2. I just rearranged. And let's quickly find out what that is. So I have 1.2 to the power of 2 minus 0 0.2 to the power of 2 square root. Now we have our adjacent. So taking this value and dividing it by the hypotenuse gives us what we can replace cosine theta with. So that number 0 0.9860. 0 0.9860. And don't forget that this is being square rooted. So let's use our calculator. The square root of 9.8 times 0 0.2 times bracket 0 0.2 over 1.2. And I'm going to place that all in parentheses. You can do this in steps if you like. I prefer to do it all in one shot. So take that divided by 0 0.9860 and we get 0 0.57 as the velocity. 0 0.5755 meters per second. So we have the velocity. The question is asking for the period. So they're asking how long it takes for every cycle to occur. And what we can do to do that is take 0 0.575 meters and write down one second at the top because we want our final units to be in time as seconds. I can multiply that now by the radius of 0 0.2 times 2 pi. 2 pi being how many radians there are in a circle. 0 0.2 is represented by the unit's meters and both these meter units will cancel out, leaving you with seconds and radians. But radians, you don't need to write down the unit. It's not necessary. So we have 1 times 0 0.2 times 2 pi. That's the top part of the fraction. And you should end up with this value divided by 0 
five seven five. And we end up with two decimal eighteen. Two point two seconds it takes for one period to occur. And so there you have it. That is how to find the period of a pendulum moving in a circle.